Hawks and highways go hand in hand Can't help to notice the spirit of this land What is it about music that moves us? Music connects us like nothing else can. I've been making music for 36 years seeking this connection. But I'm no one-trick pony. I spent my early life seeking birds. Yep, I'm an inveterate bird watcher. As middle age creeps in, I'm asking deeper questions about connections. I'm finding strange and wonderful alignments between musicians and birds. Musicians sing, birds sing. We're both colorful characters. Travel great distances playing to audiences large and small. Bird watchers make life lists. I've got a life list too of musicians I've met or aspire to meet. I'm Freddie Trujillo, touring bass player and semi pro bird watcher. I'm inviting musicians of various plumage to bird watch and discover what motivates us to carry on, to adapt to changing environment, to find a kind of wonder in a world that's worthy of a song. In our first episode, we'll be meeting Curtis Salgado at the Veterans Memorial Building in Eugene, Oregon, where Curtis is going to be playing a show for Veterans Day. Curtis is a legendary blues musician whose career has spanned several decades, from co-fronting the Robert Cray Band to touring the country with rock legend Steve Miller and Santana. He was also responsible for inspiring comedian John Belushi for his character, Joliet Jake Blues, in the famous Saturday Night Live sketch and the hit 1980 film The Blues Brothers. Curtis has been active in the music industry for over 40 years. By his early 20s, Salgado had already made a name for himself in the Eugene music scene with his band The Night Hops. Today, as the Los Angeles Times said, Salgado keeps the classic flame of soul music alive. After he and his band finished getting set up and sound checked, I met Curtis in the green room to catch up and talk about the first episode. What's up, man? Fred, How long time no see. Good to see you. It's good to see you. How you doing? Look what I made for you. I embroidered this. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Feeling thank patriotic? You. Uh, no, <laughs> I just thought maybe you need a blanket. Maybe we'll see a bald eagle tomorrow. Really? Hopefully. This so, is quite an honor. It's an honor for me. Thank you so much for doing this. Kind of talk about music, you know? And Great. Get out and talk about birds and Great, I'd love that. In my middle age, I'm starting to see the, you know, the similarities. Yeah. Yeah. Musicians have to adapt to that. I have a few friends of mine that are bird watchers. <laughs> when we were playing together, who was in the band? Michael Castle. Jacob. Jacob. Yeah. I still wish I had him. <laughs> I do. I don't know. What, what, what time do you like to rise? I mean, yeah, it's I mean, I mean, rise or whatever's fine with you. But I mean, it's obviously not the greatest bird watching thing, but. I have a backup plan to maybe go to the Eugene Raptor Center. It's a center for uh, birds, <laughs> for birds of prey who are uh, all rehabilitating from injuries or. Oh, so sweet! It'd be like us visiting a bunch of old veterans. A raptor hospital. Yeah, a raptor hospital. So. That's fantastic. Well, the thing about it, like I was saying before, you know, there's the thing about bird watching, and the show will be called Life List. You know, bird watchers keep a list of all the birds they've seen and. There's some birds that you may not have ever seen, you know? and there's some are as common as the starling, you know. And right. so, to me, the starlings are like those pop, flash in the pan, Justin right. Beavers. Right. And then there's the rare birds, you know. It's, oh. Biggest thing for me, really, is to hang out with you. Likewise. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm that's honored. that's part I of said, it. Hell yes, let's do it. <laughs> Fred? Well, you're in my neighborhood, yeah. huh? We're vecinos now. Yeah, yeah. Vecinos. Yeah. I like you're on that. Deacon? Yeah, I'm on Deacon. Yeah, we should go to Good Neighbor Pizza for a slice. Okay, <laughs> let's. While we get ready for the show, I'll tell you a bit more about this living legend. Born February 4th, 1954 in Everett, Washington, Curtis Salgado grew up in Eugene, Oregon. His home was always filled with music, and by his early 20s, Curtis was already making a name for himself in Eugene's bar scene with his band, The Nighthawks. How's everybody doing? Thank you so much. Today is Vets Day, as we know here. And so I'd like to dedicate the entire show to the veterans. So I salute to this. Are you folks ready to dance? Please welcome the Curtis Salgado Band. 
After Salgado and Cray parted ways in 1982, Curtis went on to front Room Full of Blues, singing and touring with them from 1984 to 1986. Back home in Oregon, he formed a new band, Curtis Salgado and the Stilettos, as once again tearing it up on the club scene for releasing his first solo album in 1991. His friend and fan Steve Miller invited Curtis and his band to open for him on the Summer Shed tour in 1992. Two years later, Salgado spent the summer on the road with Santana. Salgado signed with Shanakee Records in 1999, putting out four critically acclaimed albums. He successfully battled back from liver cancer in 2006 and lung cancer in 2008 and 2012, re-emerging stronger and more determined to share his music with the world. When we come back, Curtis and I will be heading over to the Cascades Raptor Center where we'll meet a few beautiful birds and maybe check a few of the rare ones off my life list. All went on the list continues. The next morning, before meeting up with Curtis, I talked to the crew about how I met the blues icon and the friendship that followed. Well, I met Curtis, uh, partly he needed a, a sub. His bass player at the time was uh, having some health troubles and I, uh, my buddy Micah Castle suggested me and I stayed up till four in the morning learning 15 songs. He gave me a big hug, gave me this jacket, started playing with him like full time. And then it was about a year after that, he got diagnosed with cancer. And I was able to play the benefit shows, one here at the Holt with uh, Steve Miller and Jimmy Vaughn and, uh, and uh, Kim Wilson from the Thunderbirds. And, and then in the Rose Garden up in Portland, we'd had Taj Mahal, Robert Cray. We just became friends. He's kind of like my blues mentor. I don't consider myself a blues musician, but I have mad respect for the blues, and you, know, you can't love rock and roll without knowing those roots. Like Muddy Water said, rock and roll had a baby. Our blues had a baby, and they called it rock and roll, so. We met up with Curtis a few minutes later, and we took off for the Cascades Raptor Center just outside of Eugene. The Cascades Raptor Center is a rehabilitation facility for ill or injured birds of prey. With nearly 50 resident species, the CRC holds one of the largest collections of raptors, hawks, owls, eagles, and falcons in the Pacific Northwest. Basically, the visitor center is right up there, and there's two loops. So if... I was just figuring I thought. So I'm going to work here. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have a couple of um, a staff and volunteers who can bring a bird out on the glove for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that'd cool. be cool. So maybe because it's veterans, they will get a bald eagle out? Or is he kind we of... We don't have, no. Uh, <laughs> Not possible. No. <laughs> They're kind of mean. Uh, they're kind of wild, too. We have a barred owl on the end okay. of that building. Sometimes we have visiting barred owls that come in. and. Then... But he's from the outside coming in and visiting yeah. someone from the inside. Yeah. So it's kind of like visiting... Visiting hours. <laughs> visiting hours. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, I'll spring you in a while. While the Raptor Center crew went off to decide on which bird to bring out for us, Curtis and I checked out a couple toward the beginning of the path. The first, a 16-year-old peregrine falcon named Freja. She was retired. This, this falcon was, flew for eight years and then was retired from the field. It was like a war plane. We moved on to Bodhi, a shy little barred owl who refused to smile for the cameras. That's okay, as Louise had flagged us down to let us know they were almost ready to bring out a big treat. A Eurasian eagle owl named Dimitri, who was hatched at the World Bird Sanctuary in St. Louis, Missouri, seven years ago. These and the blackest of fish owls are considered the largest in the world. Yeah. And that's pretty common through birds of prey in general, right? The females are as big as. Yeah, there's a few like burrowing owls you can't really tell, but um, with most of them, yeah. And some of them, like the, the bird chasing raptors, like the occipiter hawks Occipiters. and the big falcons, it can be um, 50%. Eurasian eagle owls like Dimitri have a tremendous range, spanning most of Europe and Central Eastern Asia. Though now they are considered endangered in many parts of Europe due to persecution by humans. God, there's so much like cats. 
ever take away our hats or anything? Or? No. <laughs> He's not interested in our hats. He got the food hand. I yeah. He's a super well trained professional owl. But these are, you know, they're generalists, so they're not yeah. too picky about what they're eating. Yeah. Owls are funny too because they're super territorial, huh? With, with most birds, when they're doing their territorial battles, mm -hmm. it's, it's vocal. Yeah, that's and, what they were doing all And right. posturing and things like that. I think the worst that we see is bald eagles. They will kill each other. Bald eagles are kind of jerks. Really? <laughs> After visiting with Dimitri, Curtis noticed a little something nearby. And hell, who could resist such a glamorous photo opportunity? The next raptor on the path was a jeer falcon named Nike, rescued on the Long Beach Peninsula in Washington in February of 2005. Oh, he's missing an wow. eye. Wow. He is huge. Missing an eye. Nike lost her eye after it had to be surgically removed due to a terrible infection in it when she was first rescued. Since jerf falcons primarily hunt other birds at high speeds, Nike was too disadvantaged by losing her eye to survive in the wild. Happy Vets Day. Though this little gal was found injured in Washington, their natural habitat isn't typically that far south. Jeer falcons tend to stay mainly in Alaska and northern Canada. Next up was Newton from Colorado. Northern goshawks like Newton are state and federally protected, but have yet to be listed as endangered species. This guy's, this guy's rare. He's super cool. Huh, Newton? Until the, that's what the Germans designed their stupid dive bombers after. Yeah, he, these guys are like jets. Northern goshawks are not typically presented to rehabilitation centers since they tend to shy away from human territories and loud, unnatural noises like logging and gunshots. I wish we could spend this much time with each bird, but we'd be here all day. So yep, you guessed it, montage. And jazz. <laughs> Likes all girls. Yeah, a name like Dante. He's like Dante. He's a ladies' man. You soar, but when you're close, you're red and ugly. <laughs> like that girl I saw today. You're beautiful from far away. <laughs> God. So ended the awesome day at the Cascades Raptor Center. Our biggest thanks go out to the CRC, Louise and Laura for showing us some breathtaking birds. When we come back, we'll get to know Curtis Salgado a little bit more. We'll visit his childhood home, stop outside one of the clubs he played at when he was getting started, and hear about the time he helped John Belushi hone his Blues Brothers performance. All when On The List continues. After we finished up at the Cascades Raptor Center, we made our way back across town to Curtis's childhood home to see how much had changed since he left his old neighborhood. So this right here, right here is 2328 Roosevelt Boulevard. None of this is here, none of the bushes, none of that. You can see the walnut trees. This was just pure lawn. And you can, in this neighborhood, all the houses were maintained and kept because everybody owned their house. I was raised here for 22 years. The neighborhood has totally changed. My house was like the head house of a large walnut orchard that they pieced off. And this is Roosevelt and McKinley. And it was very nice. 
it was lower middle class or lower, but everybody owned their house, everybody maintained it. Now, it's, I mean, you can see it's forgotten. down the street, now it's just completely forgotten. I can't remember, uh, how long? our neighbors used to live over there and I had a crush on them. See these bamboos right there? My mother planted those. You see this fence and this stuff? None of that existed. It was just a pier, it was just a lawn. Walnut trees were on uh, one, two, three, and then the back another three or oh, that's four. That's a whole bamboo forest. Oh yeah, yeah. That is cool. But that's uh, the kitchen, and uh, that window up there was my sister's bedroom, and then on the other side was my bedroom. And you can't see it. They just kind of blocked everything out. I'm gonna go to the end of the street. I just gotta visit. You don't have to. One more trip this time into downtown to have a look at Curtis's old stomping grounds, to find out where he cut his teeth and where he became not just part of blues history, but part of movie history as well. So I'm just gonna shoot from the hip. A lot of memories. And that is the Eugene Hotel. And when we started playing, we were playing in there. And uh, we would do like a Robert Cray band, Nighthawks. I was in the Nighthawks. And I was living with Richard, who was in the Robert Cray band. Meanwhile, what was happening is that uh, they were putting together John Landis, much I didn't know. I don't own a television set. I never saw Saturday Night Live. But this is how I got introduced. As Richard woke up, came out and goes, hey, Robert's got a part in a movie. That was it. That's all I heard. That's all I cared about. So there was a cocaine dealer, and his name was Richard. And we called him Little Dick, because he was only about this high. So Little Dick comes up to me, and I'm on stage, and he comes up and goes like this, Hey, Curtis. And I'm going, I'm in the middle of a song. And I look down on him, I just ignore him. He goes, Curtis, Bellucci wants to meet you. And then finally I go, what? He goes, Bellucci wants to meet you. And I just went, you little dick <laughs> and so I jump off the stage it's the end of the set and I start walking and he grabs my arm and turns me around he goes here's this is John Bellucci I don't know who he is and I go like this what's up um, and he goes uh, yeah I like your music you remind me of a friend of mine he plays harmonica too and, and I kind of look at I go really he goes yeah his name is Dan Aykroyd and I go oh okay you know, he's going on and he goes, yeah, I'm with the movie that's in town. I go, oh yeah, Robert's in that movie, and Robert's on the same show. And I'm talking to him and he goes, I have to do this movie here in town and it's really tough because I have to learn the lines, practice here, then I gotta fly back to New York because I'm doing this show called Saturday Night Live. And he goes, yeah, but I'm really excited about it because I'm gonna have Ray Charles, we're gonna have Ray Charles, and that's when I went, what? You're gonna have Ray Charles? What? He goes, let's go smoke a joint. And the next thing I know, I'm going over to his house, bringing him records. And during the, when they were filming the movie, word would get out. And we'd go there on Monday nights, and the place is packed. The crew and the stars of Animal House are hanging out to see us. So the place is filled, and Bellucci goes, hey, Curtis, I wanna, can I jam with you guys? And he gets up on stage, and it goes, ba -da 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 -da. I'm blowing harp, right? So, da -da -da -da. We blow it the night. Da -da -da -da. And I'm like looking at him going, what the f And the audience is peeing their pants. They are. So I jump off the stage and literally I can still picture him. He comes up and he goes, hey, hey, what'd you think? And I go, is was that Joe Cocker? He goes, yeah, I do Joe Cocker on that variety show, I was telling you. <laughs> and I looked at him and he's like this and I go, you gotta do it from here, you gotta be yourself. If you're gonna do this stuff, blues is about being you. And this is what he did, he goes, yeah, you're right, you're right. And that was it. That's the only advice I gave him. Man, he was, from that point on, he was John Bellucci. He didn't do anybody else. And you know, they were a great, the Blues Brothers were hot. They are a great front man. I mean, they know. And they had the and that was, rhythm section. They had a sick, the best <laughs> rhythm section and band money could buy. Yeah. And they knew how to, you know, they know how to front a band. From there, we wandered into the old Eugene Hotel, where unfortunately the historic building has been renovated into an upscale retirement community. 
We wandered the halls for a few minutes looking for points of interest, but found nothing other than ourselves getting creeped out. <laughs> well, man, I think we had a successful day, Chris. Yeah, good. I think it's really worked out great, man. I mean, <laughs> I'm glad this good man. I mean, yeah. it meant a lot to I mean, me. Being in hometown on Sunday, the weather cooperated. Yes. We saw some veteran birds. Sang for some veterans. It was a good weekend, man. We'll go get some tacos in the way home. Yeah, that's that was just. <laughs> November isn't the most ideal time to bird watch in the Northwest. It was apparently the perfect time to catch up with Curtis Salgado in his hometown. I couldn't have been luckier to get Curtis on Veterans Day weekend, playing for vets at the Veterans Memorial Ballroom. It was also fitting to visit the Cascades Raptor Center with him. Curtis is a survivor, and so are these birds of prey. As I explore the terrain of middle age, I look around and ask, what the hell am I doing here? How do we carry on as musicians? When I hang out with guys like Curtis that have never had a B plan and made music their life, it inspires me. As I rekindle my old passion for bird watching, I hope to find answers by inviting musicians of all types to join me. Maybe along the way, we'll see some beautiful creatures and learn from them. As we see how these birds adapt to their environment, maybe we can see some parallels to how we adapt to an always changing music industry. And I, Freddy Trujillo, will add to my life list of not only birds, but also musicians I've met or aspire to meet. Hawks and highways come.